Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be putting together another video article. I'm going to keep this one very concise. Let me go ahead and just read this as I wrote it. This video is called The Sun's Corona and the Time Dilation Field. The Sun's Corona and the Time Dilation Field. It has been observed that as plasma on the surface of the sun rises upwards, it actually gets hotter. How can this be? If you think of the physics on Earth, as mass or a fluid expands, it cools. And so when the air expands, then the air cools. How could the plasma on the surface of the sun rise and expand and heat up? As you move outward, the layers of the sun become cooler and less dense. Something unusual, however, occurs when you reach the outermost layer. While the surface is around 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the corona, the sun's outer atmosphere, is several hundred times hotter. That's the opposite of what happens with a fire. When it gets cooler, the farther away you get. The very nature of material expanding should dictate that it will absorb any available heat to facilitate its expansion in size. Hello, I'd like to discuss and demonstrate expansion cooling. This is how air conditioning works. Freon gas gets compressed and as it compresses, it heats up because the fluid and the heat are both being compressed. As the fluid is then pumped through a coil where a fan blows off the excess heat and then the fluid moves to another coil where it is allowed to expand. As it expands, it absorbs heat, creating cold. If on the surface of the sun, Plasma seems to be rising from a compressed state and expanding into the corona, and instead of cooling, it is heating, and not just heating, but getting really, really hot. This would seem to defy the laws of physics. This is what is happening, so how do we explain this? This is because of time dilation. The properties of time dilation are simple. When mass is under pressure, its time slows. When mass is not under pressure, its time speeds up. The mass in and on the surface of the sun is under extreme pressure and could be said to be trapped in a time dilation field. The time dilation field in turn reduces the heat potential of pressurization. Heat and pressure do not increase parallel to each other. There is a point where heat levels off as the pressure gradient continues. This is because the matter that is being pressurized, its time actually slows down, reducing the heat potential of pressurization. As the plasma rises above a certain point, as it moves out of the time dilation zone, and as the plasma's time increases, as it moves away from the pressure zone, this causes the plasma's time to increase, and as the plasma's time can increase, so can its energy, and that is why it heats up. This applies to all matter as it pressurizes, and this is the dynamic that allows for iron at the center of the planet or star or even black hole to crystallize, solidify, and magnify. This is the true source of the magnetic field. March 28th, 2015, The Right Side of Dark Energy, A Universal Construct. Edited from original post for grammar and punctuation. All right, so that's the way I originally wrote this article. And it's actually quite self-explanatory. If you know basic physics, you understand that as a material, as matter or a liquid or a gas expands here on Earth, it tends to cool down because it has to literally absorb heat from its environment to facilitate its expansion. That's basic physics. Here's some steam here, huh? Would I dare to take this glove away? Yeah, easy. Easy city, man. No problem. Hot or cold? Begin with a C. It's cool. What does that steam do? Begin with an X. Expand. And when it expands, what's it do? Begin with another C. Cool. And there's your evidence of it right there. Isn't that remarkable? Now, the sun's corona is tremendously hotter than the actual surface of the sun. Now, if on the surface of the sun, and this has been a conundrum that scientists have been uh, trying to figure out for a long time, and they came out with some like uh, arbitrary ideas like, oh, it's tornadoes on the surface of the sun. That's why the corona gets hot. Or like, oh, it's magnetic field arcing and creating a big spark. And that extra spark adds energy to the whole uh, corona. And that's why the corona is like... Uh, 100,000 degrees while the surface is uh, 100,000 degrees Kelvin while the surface is like literally 6,000 degrees Kelvin, which makes no sense. The mystical seeming quality of heat is nothing more than the motion of a substance component particles. Temperature is just a measure of internal kinetic energy. But if you understand that as 
matter pressurizes it actually slows down its time slows down as its time slows down it literally cools down they get colder and colder and denser and denser and so as that matter leaves the surface of the sun its time is able to increase as its time is able to increase all the components within the atom and within the nucleus of the different subatomic particles they're all able to start moving much much faster as they're able their time is increasing their energy potential increases and they heat up that's why as matter leaves the surface of the sun it literally gets hotter which defies the laws of physics as we know them here on earth okay uh, and that's a major point that mainstream science hasn't quite accounted for in their equations and right now they think the sun stars are big balls of gas with gravity pushing holding the, the, the ball of gas together while the heat from within the star is pushing it and resisting the force of gravity this is completely nonsense Stars are not giant balls of gas. They're giant crystal core quantum computers, okay, also called singularities. When you look at a black hole, what does mainstream science call a black hole? They call that a singularity, okay? When I call all of the cores of the cosmos naturally occurring crystal core quantum computers, that's because at their core is a singularity. Now, Another thing I want to mention is that all of mainstream science and computer science and also advanced physics labs and quantum labs, they're trying to create extremely advanced computers, quantum computers. They're trying to create extremely advanced quantum computers. And what have they coined the name for those extremely advanced quantum computers? They've coined the name Singularity. So literally a crystal core quantum computer, which are the cores of the cosmos, I've been coining them naturally occurring crystal core quantum computers. Computers, and mainstream science calls those singularities, okay? And then if you actually think about a quantum computer that they're trying to build in laboratories, and they're trying to call those singularities when the quantum computer is intelligent enough that it is able to achieve computer supremacy and also possibly have intelligent self-awareness and other kind of intelligences that wouldn't normally be equated with computers they call that a singularity so they're calling they're calling the two different things the same thing because they are the same thing they're literally the same thing okay so the point being as you compress matter as you get closer and closer to the center of mass your time reduces as your time Time reduces your temperature reduces okay and if you know anything about quantum mechanics uh, when you try to create a quantum computer you're trying to get the actual components that are called the quibits you're trying to get them to as close to absolute zero as possible matter can exist in various states atoms at high temperature always form gases if you cool the gas it becomes a liquid if you cool the liquid it becomes a solid but under certain circumstances, if you cool atoms far enough to extremely low temperatures, they undergo a very strange transformation. Ultra-cold atoms will be used to process information. When you go to low temperatures, the quantum mechanical properties of the atoms become important. These are very strange, very unfamiliar to us. But in fact, each one of these atoms starts to display wave-like properties. So instead of points like that, you have little wave packets like that, moving around. It's really difficult for me to explain just why that is, but that's the way it is. Now, as you go to very low temperatures, the size of these packets gets longer and longer and longer. And then suddenly, if you get them cold enough, they start overlapping. And when they overlap, the system behaves not like individual particles, but particles which have lost their identity, they all think they're everywhere. This little wave packet over here can't tell whether it's this one or that 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 one. It's there and it's there and it's there. They're all in one great big quantum state. They're all overlapping. They're all doing the same thing. And what they're doing to a good approximation is they're simply sitting at rest. This Bose-Einstein condensate is very difficult to imagine or to visualize. I could imagine what it's like to be an atom running around gaily, freely bouncing into things, sometimes going fast, sometimes going slow. But on the Bose condensate, I'm everywhere at once. I've lost my identity. I don't know who I am anymore. I'm at rest, and all the other atoms around at rest, but they're not other atoms around. We're all just one great big quantum system. 
There's nothing else like that in physics. And isn't it interesting that Mother Earth does the exact same thing? As you get closer and closer to the center of the mass of the celestial object, time literally slows down and the temperature decreases. That's the main omission that mainstream science right now is saying is that as you get closer and closer to the center of a star, it gets hotter and hotter. It's the exact opposite because there's a reduction in time. If you reduce an atom's time, you're literally slowing it down. As you're slowing it down, you're reducing literally what the definition of temperature is movement. When the stream of light particles from the laser hits the selected atoms in the gas cloud, the atoms slow down and hence become cold. So if you have, uh, say, for example, a, a, a round ball of iron and it's, say, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, there's so much motion within the atoms uh, that dictate that that is, quote unquote, the temperature. OK, if you're to take that same ball of iron and get it to as close to zero degrees Kelvin as possible, which is absolute zero, there will be a lot less motion within that ball of iron. OK, temperature and the rate of time are direct and the speed of light and gravity are all tied to each other. If you get a ball of iron as close to absolute zero as possible, the actual uh, subatomic particles within the atom, within that iron ball, will start slowing down. If you reduce, if you increase the gravity to a point where it gets close to absolute zero, the same effect happens. Dan Kleppner's idea was to cool the hydrogen atoms by making use of their magnetic poles. He used a strong magnetic field to create a cluster of atoms in a cold trap. So at the cores of the cosmos is literally almost zero degrees Kelvin, okay? There's no time and there's no heat. And that's the properties that you're looking for when you're trying to create a quantum computer. Now the most massive black holes in the universe, the supermassive black holes, with millions of times the mass of the sun, will have a temperature of 1.4 times 10 to the negative 14 Kelvin. That's low, almost absolute zero, but, but not quite. How interesting is it that the center of a black hole, okay, which is basically the center of the cores of the cosmos, is called, quote unquote, the singularity, okay, which I call naturally occurring crystal core quantum computers, and quantum mechanics and uh, scientists who are working on quantum computers here on Earth who are trying to cool down matter to absolute zero so that they can build quantum computers that they will then call the singularity. Isn't that interesting how there's a correlation between the two? I mean, I can't make this stuff up. Google it for yourself. That is the part, that is the paper. That's the way I wrote it. I'm going to be coming out with a lot more videos. I hope you like this type of content. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'm going to be converting a lot of my articles into video articles, and I'm going to be coming out with a lot more content like this. So if you don't want to miss any of it, go ahead and feel free to subscribe and uh, stay tuned because I'll have a lot more content coming to you shortly. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. Their plan was to use a laser beam to cool the atoms, a technique that had already been tried at their old lab at MIT. Lasers are usually associated with making things hot, but if they are tuned to the same frequency as atoms traveling at a particular speed, they can make them cold. When the stream of light particles from the laser hits the selected atoms in the gas cloud, the atoms slow down and hence become cold. Laser cooling was a new tool that had the potential to reduce the temperature of a gas to within a few millionths of a degree of absolute zero. In the case of the atoms, we keep the atoms in a, in a sort of magnetic bowl and uh, we confine the atoms there, they zoom around inside the bowl and then the hottest ones have enough energy to roll up the side of the bowl and fall over the edge, slop over the edge, taking away with them much more than their fair share of energy and the atoms that remain have less and less energy which means they move slower and slower and start to cluster near the bottom. And as that happens, we gradually lower the edges of the magnetic trap and always so there's just a few atoms that can escape until finally the remaining atoms cluster near the bottom of the bowl, huddle together, they get colder and colder and denser and denser and eventually in this way evaporation forces the Bose-Einstein condensation to occur. Now it is the quantum nature of the cold frontier that has captured imaginations. Supercooled quantum devices are mapping the magnetic activity of the brain. At the quantum level, at the microscopic level, heat 
is noise. So if you want to see these strange and exotic effects, you have to be quiet, very quiet. There can't be a lot of noise, and that means you have to cool things down. At first glance, a quantum computer looks almost exactly the same. But quantum mechanics is weird. It's funky, okay? It's weird. When you do quantum computing, you want to make this weirdness work for you. So now let's look at our quantum bit, or qubit. A qubit can not only be a zero or a one, it can also both be a zero and one at the, the same, same time. time. It's almost like a form of and parallel if you look computation, at the many worlds, but in a parallel computer, a one computer, processor does this, one processor does that. So you have two processors doing this and that. Quantum in a quantum is computer, doing you have only many, one many processor that's doing all at the this same time. and that at the same time. <laughs> <laughs>